Hey everybody, this is Jim at uh, sp500chart.com using time-honored techniques to understand modern markets. Featuring daily technical analysis videos of the uh, S&P 500 index. Check out sp500chart.com. Um, I want to remind you that um, this uh, video and the website are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at either is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I'm not a licensed uh, financial professional. I'm really just a guy who draws lines on charts. Don't pretend to be anything else. But uh, let's talk a little bit. I'm going to do a series on some basics of, uh, of chart techniques and uh, these uh, I hope you'll find uh, helpful. So let's look at some charts. Okay, the first thing I want to do uh, in, in this series, and, and at times the, uh, the picture may not be that, uh, that interesting, but hopefully you'll just uh, let this be static and, and hear what I have to say. Um, what is a stock chart? And I know that's extremely basic, and I don't want to offend anyone's uh, intelligence, but what, what is a stock chart? Because we have to start with uh, an underlying idea of what a stock chart is. And uh, most people would say, well, it's a graphical. Uh, what was that all about? I didn't do that. Uh, Firefox has a mind of its own sometime. I have no idea why that resized on me. Anyway, um, a, a lot of people have the, the, the view that a stock chart is essentially just a uh, an historical record of, uh, of the price movements of a stock or index or mutual fund or whatever commodity uh, future uh, futures contract whatever but uh, I would maintain that it's more than just that what a stock chart is is a graphical re representation of the psych psychology uh, that is evident in a large group of people as they try to ascertain value on a flexible instrument. What I mean by that is the stock chart shows the uh, the psychological uh, behavior of buyers versus sellers. It's not just the prices going up and down, it is buyer versus seller. Now if we look at, at buyers, who are they? Well buyers are people who, uh, and when I mean, I don't mean buyer like you can buy a short ETF. When I say buyers, uh, I mean people who are, who are going long uh, the market. Uh, buyers are people who have the outlook that, that something is cheap and it should go up in value. Sellers are people who have the outlook that something is expensive and it should go down in value. Now these two forces pit against each other and uh, oftentimes you can see that, uh, that they're pretty equally matched. At other times you can see that, uh, that one side is clearly winning the battle. Um, so I, I want to challenge you to think of a stock chart not just as a record of prices, but rather as a record of human interaction between buyer and seller. Because if you do that, you can start to see that there's more in a stock chart than just uh, this random walk of, of prices. And once you begin to understand that there's more in a stock chart, you can start to look for things that have historically um, given something of a heads up as to what the, the future may hold. Now, the first question that you may have is, well, uh, just, just tell me the pattern that works every time. And uh, the answer to that is there is not one. Um, stock charts are historical data. They are not uh, predictors of future world events. They are not predictors of, uh, of uh, technologies that may or may not uh, be, be new on the scene that change the game. But I will say this, that uh, there is a fairly high incidence of repeating patterns over decades and centuries that have uh, shown themselves in stock charts. And um, the basis for everything that I say here really can be found in, in, in the book by uh, John Edwards and, uh, 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 excuse me, John McGee. Uh, what is Edwards' first name? I don't know. I always just talk about McGee. Uh, but it's Edwards and McGee's uh, Technical Analysis of Stock Trends. 
And uh, so anyway, let, let's talk about some basics now that we have this very underlying fundamental idea uh, in place that a stock chart is a graphical representation of buyer versus seller in the overall psychology of the market. I, I just want to say one more thing. Uh, I don't think people today are much different than uh, the way people were a thousand years ago. And what I mean by that, uh, a person who invested a thousand dollars today and is looking at uh, a 20 percent return on that in one week probably is mulling over taking his profits about the same way as a guy who invested a thousand pounds a thousand a thousand years ago and made 20 percent in a week i think the 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 basic uh, uh, the 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 underlying emotional makeup of mankind i don't think is radically different today as compared to at any time uh, in the past when it comes to uh, desire for gain or fear of loss. So let's let's move on. I want to just talk about a couple very basic things here um, in this video. There, this will be a series of videos. So please uh, check them out. I'm going to release them, oh, probably one or two a week. And um, But anyway, let's talk about uh, w when, you, when you look at a stock chart, um, what does it mean when, when you have an arithmetic chart versus a logarithmic chart? What's the difference? Why? We, is one better than another? Well, to begin with, I use almost always logarithmic charts. You're looking at a log chart, chart of, uh, of uh, JSO, uh, JA Solar, and you can see that, uh, that JA had been in a pretty well-defined and, and well-recognized pattern here called a rising wedge. And this was a tough pattern to, to spot for a long time, but I'm going to tell you, uh, we'll get into this pattern. We will actually look at this pattern in more detail uh, down the road. But uh, what I want to show you right now is just one thing, and that is the importance of using a logarithmic versus an arithmetic chart. Uh, to begin with, uh, this is a log chart. What a log chart means, as you can see, since this uh, stock has had a wide range of trading from anywhere up around uh, the, the mid-20s down to as uh, little as a buck fifty. Um, what I want to show you is that the log chart has a better tendency to show you how people react to various percent gains. Because on a log chart... The, a, a, uh, a vertical distance measurement at the top of the chart, up in this area up here, let's say we measure uh, from here to here. And where are these measurements roughly? Well, let's just snap a horizontal line there and there. So we've got a movement here of roughly 27, and let's call it 1350. Uh, because that makes the math very easy. So that means that uh, this stock doubles between this distance or, or, or this line and this line for this distance. Okay? So on a log chart, wherever I move this on the chart, that represents a double. Here you can see there's the buck fifty, there's the three bucks. Okay? So the same motivation that led to this uh, creating um, uh, this pattern right here. In other words, from here to here is roughly a double. So from here to here is also a double. So if, uh, if, if uh, this stock has a tendency to sell off after it doubles, and that's, that's overly simplistic thinking right now. It's not that easy. But if that is the case, then we want to know that. And frankly, it, it, it doesn't really matter if it doubles from 50 to 100 or 50 cents to a dollar. It's still a double. And um, I don't know anybody who buys a $50 stock, and then when it goes up 50 cents, they go, hot dang, I'm taking profits. But if you buy a 50 cent stock and it goes up to a dollar, you're taking profits. So that is one of the values of the uh, uh, logarithmic chart. Uh, wherein the vertical distance that represents a given percent gain will remain constant all the way 
from a penny to a thousand dollars. Now let's see what happens if we switch this uh, chart over to an arithmetic uh, scale. Okay, now here's our distance that represents the move from 1350 to 27 dollars. This, you know, if 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 uh, if I use this distance in order for for that gain to be made again, we got to go from a buck ninety to about four to about fourteen dollars and eighty cents, and that is not a realistic expectation. See what I mean? If we look at it arithmetically, then this distance is um, what's a good way to put it is out of scale with the percentage gain. So that's why I use a logarithmic chart. Uh, second of all, I mentioned, and this will be the last thing we talk about in this video, uh, I mentioned the fact that this is was a fairly uh, common pattern here, a rising wedge, and once that broke down, um, uh, and we'll talk more about wedges later, but very briefly, rising wedges have a strong tendency, and that tendency is when they break down, they tend to uh, produce a movement back to where uh, that wedge was uh, when it first started. So look here. In, uh, in in a fall of 2008, this was around a buck uh, about about a buck fifty, and it it entered this rising wedge. Once that broke, and you could see that it, that it clearly broke here, and I and I'm saying we got probably uh, reason to, to to call this a touch as well on this line. Once that broke, then uh, then we are looking for uh, a, a b bad things to happen if you're long. We're looking for the tendency for this to return uh, back to a buck fifty, which in fact it did over the course of uh, of a little bit more than uh, seven months. Now, what if we had been looking at this in an arithmetic chart? Well, to begin with, we can't really make anything really line up. Um, you know, it, it's maybe you could sort of go like this, but you know, the this looks more like a, a, a regular channel than it does what it really is, which is a rising wedge. So there you have it. That's our first uh, little little free thing here, uh, and that the, that is the importance of, of the log scale chart. I believe it it does a much better job in. Uh, graphically displaying uh, people's reaction to to uh, percentage gains in the market and, and really that's that's what we all do uh, look thanks for uh, checking out this video I want you to uh, consider coming by sp500chart.com uh, I've got a very affordable uh, subscription service for daily S&P 500 updates um, and I say daily, there'll be maybe one, one, uh, one time a month when, uh, when I cannot get a video done for some reason or another. Um, but, you know, machine is down or I'm traveling, eh, you know. So uh, the goal is uh, to have these videos available 95% of the time after the markets close. And uh, it's very, very affordable. Less than a cup of coffee per day, you get a detailed and I mean a detailed analysis of the S&P 500. We'll look at it from long range, intermediate range, short range. We'll look at five minute charts, two hour charts, two day charts. Whatever is relevant to what's going on in the market, that is the chart we look at. And a lot of times we look at all kinds of time frames in the same video. Average length of these videos is about 11 to 15 minutes. That's the average. So I spent some time doing this. The subscription is $19.95 per month. And if you want to get it for a year, I still have that available uh, for $189.95. At some point, uh, I will just go to the monthly, uh, uh, monthly uh, subscription uh, because the, the, the yearly subscription is, uh, well, 
we'll keep it going for a while. Let's just put it that way. But uh, eventually, we're go- we're going to switch over to just monthly. So take advantage of that of that yearly subscription if you're so inclined. And I want you also to look back on some of my YouTube videos. Uh, if if you look me up, old school chartist, and 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 uh, check out how effective some of these things uh, have been. Take care.